After successfully scooping a new sample from an area of sedimentary rocks, the Perseverance rover has started looking for options for landing a future mission on Mars that will return the samples to Earth. It seems like Perseverance has collected enough samples to send back home for analysis. Now, it's ready and waiting for a companion spacecraft to land on Mars and deliver the samples. Let's see how the rover is planning to help its future companion land safely on Mars. Welcome to Space World. In today's video, we are going to talk about how Perseverance rover is finding the perfect landing space for the upcoming sample return mission. So, if you want to know more about it, then stay with us until the end of the video. NASA's car-sized Perseverance Percy Mars rover has been hard at work carrying out its science campaign in Jezero Crater on the Red Planet. But it's equally been busy scouting for sites for NASA's planned Mars Sample Return MSR, mission, which is a joint mission with the European Space Agency. One of the many tasks for Percy has been to collect sample tubes that MSR will eventually return to Earth for future analysis, having collected its ninth sample on July 6. This most recent sample is especially intriguing, as it's the first taken from Jezero's delta itself, which is believed to be one of the most ideal locations to search for past life on the Red Planet. For now, the samples are being stored on board the pioneering explorer, but Percy's next task in this endeavor is to find an acceptable site for MSR to be able to successfully land, collect the samples, then launch them back to Earth. What makes MSR so historic is it will be the first time that scientists back on Earth will be able to directly study and analyze samples from Mars, as all the analyses thus far have been carried out by the robotic explorers we've sent to Mars. Sites of interest are being considered based on both their vicinity to the delta and to each other, but also for being relatively flat, lander-friendly terrain. Having samples close to the delta might ensure that they are most ideal to study for past life, and their proximity to one another reduces the time it will take to collect them. Also, like all missions, having a debris-free surface will allow for an easy landing. But since MSR will be the first to launch something from the surface of Mars, a flat area will ensure a proper launch trajectory for the samples into orbit and eventually back to Earth. The Perseverance team pulled out all of the stops for us because Mars Sample Return has unique needs when it comes to where we operate," said MSR Program Manager Richard Cook of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California. Essentially, a dull landing place is good. The flatter and more uninspiring the vista, the better we like it. Because while there are a lot of things that need to be done when we arrive to pick up the samples, sightseeing is not one of them. MSR is broken down into various spacecraft and stages, also known as runners. Sample Retriever Lander, Percy, running the samples to the lander, Mars Ascent Vehicle, Capture, Containment and Return System, Earth Return Orbiter, and finally, the Earth Entry System. The first runner, the Sample Retriever Lander, will touch down near Percy's initial landing site and deposit the Fetch Rover which will be the second runner and responsible for collecting the samples and returning them back to the lander. There are several options for this second runner, the first being an alternate runner to deliver the samples, while the second is Percy retaining some of its samples and returning them directly to the lander itself. Once the samples are successfully aboard the Mars Ascent Vehicle, the third runner, they are launched into orbit. This would be the first rocket to ever launch from the surface of Mars. Once in orbit, the samples are delivered to the fourth runner, the Earth Return Orbiter, whose job will be to properly orient the sample container to transfer it into the clean zone for the return to Earth. This is when the Earth Return Orbiter becomes the fifth runner, ferrying the samples within the entry vehicle back to Earth. The sixth and final runner in this long and complex process will be the Earth Entry System, whose sole purpose will be to safely bring the samples through the Earth's atmosphere and eventually into the various scientific labs where the samples will be thoroughly studied for potential signs of life. 
Therefore, sites of interest are being considered based on their proximity to the delta and one another, and the fact that the terrain is relatively flat and lander-friendly. The sample's proximity to the delta may make them the best candidates for studying previous life. It will take less time to gather them if they are close together. Like all missions, having a surface free of debris will facilitate a simple landing. However, a flat spot will guarantee a correct launch trajectory for the samples into orbit and eventually back to Earth, as MSR will be the first to launch something from the surface of Mars. Adding to this, a 200-foot ring of almost level land without any boulders larger than 7.5 inches in diameter is required for the upcoming MSR missions. The MSR crew is already thinking about a spot which they are referring to as the landing strip because of how level it seems. The MSR crew collected detailed imagery of the area using Perseverance's navigation cameras to look closely at the landing strip. Now the most important question, how MSR will find items to be returned? Well, it's a really interesting process, and if we could see it with our eyes happening at Mars, it would be a remarkable experience, which will occur for the first time in the history of space exploration. So, in order to find the items to be returned, the sample return lander, a miniature launch pad with a robotic arm, will receive the samples that the Fetch rover has collected from Perseverance after first receiving them from Perseverance. The sample return lander will then use its arm to transfer Perseverance's obtained materials from the Fetch rover into the 10-foot-tall Mars Ascent Vehicle. The Mars Ascent Vehicle will then be put into orbit where an ESA orbiter will pick it up and bring it back to Earth. This will be a truly amazing process to watch. So, what do we know more about the campaign? According to information revealed, NASA's Mars Sample Return Campaign promises to revolutionize humanity's understanding of Mars by bringing scientifically selected samples to Earth for study using the most sophisticated instruments around the world. The campaign would fulfill a solar system exploration goal, a high priority since the 1970s and in the last three National Academy of Sciences Planetary Decadal Surveys. Adding to this, the strategic NASA and ESA partnership would be the first mission to return samples from another planet and the first launch from the surface of another planet. The samples collected by NASA's Perseverance Mars rover during its exploration of an ancient lake bed are thought to present the best opportunity to reveal clues about the early evolution of Mars, including the potential for past life. And this is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share your views with us in the comments below. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos about space. And thank you for watching.